you sell on eBay has a very big impact on your sales. See, over the last couple months, I have not only been grinding out video game listings, but I've also been focusing on a couple other items. And with that, my results on my own eBay store, as well as the shared eBay store I have common that, have gone way up. So I wanna go ahead and talk to you guys about what sort of items you should be listing to boost your sales, especially now during the summer when things can be kind of slow. Now, first of all, you need to take a look at if you have a item that you're able to consistently list on eBay. For me, it's video games. However, that might not be the case for you, but just hear me out, maybe you might consider this as well. Now, video games are super easy to list in large volumes. This is because they're all relatively the same. It's just the game title that's different. And on top of that, they're super easy to list, test, source, and of course, they sell like no tomorrow. However, when it comes to selling video games, if you aren't a gamer and you don't know what you're talking about in this field, you might have a little bit of a harder time knowing what games to properly source for, which, you know, that kind of has to go with anything you're selling on eBay. Now, another thing you do want to keep in mind is that if you have no consoles currently in your eBay studio or wherever you're working out of, it's gonna be a little hard to get started as console prices have gone way up. And of course, I'll talk about that later on in this video. But let's just say you have a couple consoles and some controllers laying around. A great thing you can do is either find some of your old video games list on your eBay store, or go ahead, go on eBay, and just search for lots of games. Now I'm talking anywhere between 20 to 50 games. I like to pay around less than $2 a piece. That's usually where the range is. It can be a little hard at times to find inventory, but if you're patient, you'll definitely find the right deal. Now, keeping all that in mind, because video games are so easy to list on eBay, if you're consistently listing, let's say around 50 a week, you should be looking at a good amount of consistent sales. Now, you're probably thinking, well, here about Video games kind of don't sell for a lot of money, so why would I waste all my time, you know, selling $5 games on eBay? Well, here's the thing. Now, usually video games are just kind of a good thing. It's kind of a good foundation for your store, but therefore you can list a bunch of other items that will bring you in a whole lot more money. I will talk about that later in the video. Now, because you're selling so many video games all at once, that's going to lead to you having a lot of hopefully good feedback. And people usually like to feedback if, of course, you live in feedback first, or if the game arrives there super fast, and of course, the game's in a really good condition. So with that being said, the more feedback your store gets, the better it is for you in the future as, you know, feedback is definitely a very big element in how high your listings rank in the eBay algorithm. And of course, it's definitely gonna help you reach that top rated seller status, which is ultimately the cherry on top when it comes to being at the top of search results. Now, let's say you don't wanna deal with video games. Well, you're in luck because I have a different item that you can sell. Now, me and my good friend and business partner, Common Lad, we talk about this item quite a bit on both of our channels, and that is because they sell like no tomorrow and for quite a bit of money. Of course, I'm talking about cordless phones, specifically Panasonic cordless phones. Now, these guys are best in bundles, but they still sell great as individual replacement units. You can find one of these units for around $5 a piece at your local garage sale or thrift store. On top of that, you can usually find bundles for anywhere between five to $10. And usually those come with about three to four phones. Now you're definitely looking at quite a bit more money for the phone bundles as I'm showing you guys right now, but individual units do sell great because well, people usually might lose a unit and they might just need one to quickly replace it. But of course, there's also other brands that you're gonna find at your thrift stores and garage sales, such as VTech, Uniden, uh, AT&T. But I personally do recommend sticking with Panasonic that they just have the best sell-through rate. Now you're probably thinking, well, Aravel, you know, why would I buy phones when video games take up way less space and you know, they're so much easier to source, I can sell way more of them. Just think about this. Starting off testing phones is so much easier. You just plug it into your wall, make sure it works, make sure there's no corrosion damage and you're good to go. Maybe a little bit of a clean if necessary, but otherwise that's it when it comes to testing and cleaning. But there's also the issue of how much space they take up well, if you simply just go ahead and take the unit slash the, the phone itself off of the charging base, put that in a Ziploc bag, and then just label that and use that as a custom SKU, then they will not take as much space because you can clearly just stick them in a box or container and then won't be sticking up or anything, so you're good to go. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at video games versus the phones once again, in terms of feedback, video games is definitely up there as phones, just you're not gonna sell as many all at once, especially if you're doing bundles, but the money that you're gonna make from it definitely will offset that. 
Now enough of finding items to consistently list on your page. Maybe you already have that. Another thing to look at is what type of items you're selling on your store. You see, selling popular items is gonna lead to more sales. If you're just listing items that nobody wants and don't have a very good sell through rate, that kind of explains itself. Now what type of items should you be looking out for to kind of kick boost perhaps some of those slower weeks or months? Some great items that you can definitely take a look at that will definitely sell in less than a week are essentially anything made by Apple. I'm talking about iPhones, iPods, iPads, even MacBooks, which are kind of rare to find, but we recently did find one in our last video. If they work in the iCloud lock, these items sell like no tomorrow. Even if you underprice them a little bit, they'll definitely sell way faster than less than a week. I basically sold all of my family's old iPhones just so that we can buy new ones. And trust me, they actually sell super fast. And because you're not iCloud locked, speaking of what you're trying to sell your old phones, make sure you do remove the iCloud lock for them. Uh, make sure you turn off fun iPhone. You know what you gotta do. And of course, make sure you do factory reset them before you actually send it out just so that you can erase any sort of information. But because I actually have experience selling these sort of stuff, I can tell you that there's so much money to be made here. It is a little bit harder to find, but if you can't find them at you know either garage sales, family members who no longer want their phones and want a little bit of cash for them, this is a great way to boost not only sales, but also get some money in the account. Now, like I said, things made by Apple might be a little bit harder to find at thrift stores because who in the world is donating an iPhone? But you can also take the other route, which is hand held consoles. I'm talking Nintendo DS's, Game Boys, uh, PSPs. As long as you can get these at the right price, these guys also sell like no tomorrow. We sold a Nintendo 3DS, which I picked up for I believe 20 bucks with the charger, a game memory card stencil, which was of course included in the item when I picked it up. That thing sold for like, I think $120. We picked it up for 20. That thing sold in literally less than, I would say 48 hours. Definitely the best pickup of I think the year. And we've also picked up, I believe, a 25th anniversary Mario or Super Mario Bros. Edition Nintendo 3DS. That guy we picked up for 50 bucks, sold for 90, and I'd say about a week. And we recently actually bought a Game Boy Advance for $10 and literally sold it this morning for $74. We literally listed this guy like two, three days ago. I'm telling you, handheld consoles are worth so much money and they still sell like crazy. Now, these are also a little bit on the harder side to find, but consoles on the other hand, here is where things are a little bit more interesting. Now, not all consoles are gonna be worth a whole lot more money, specifically the Wii's, which are you know more on the common side to find at your thrift stores. Those you're looking at around, I'd say 35 to $40 for a loose console and about 50 to $60 for a complete set. So I'm talking cables, controllers, maybe a game or two. But let's talk about some other consoles. Xbox 360s, I kind of stopped picking those up because of the Red Ring of Death. I had a very bad experience with that last year. If you've been watching the channel for quite a while, you know that. Um, and then PS3s are is really where you want to be looking into. Now, your thrift store might overprice these a little bit, but these guys have almost doubled in value in literally like half a year. Just get this, I sold a PS3, I believe second gen, uh, for $90 last year. That was my biggest sale. I picked it up for 30, not, I wasn't sure if it was gonna work. Sold it for 90 in like less than a day. These things sell like crazy. Now, that same PS3, I, I may be even worth, I'd say a good 120, 150 bucks. Some of the backward compatibles, PS3s, those are worth a good two, $300. We've been picking up those. PS2s have also absolutely skyrocketed in value, especially the PS2 Slims. If you bundle any sort of cons up with a controller or two, plus the cables, you're gonna be looking at a whole lot more money. And like I said, these guys definitely do sell very well, especially in Q4 when everyone's trying to get gifts and a lot of people love nostalgia during that sort of season. So there's definitely a lot of money to be made there. And yeah, those are just a couple of things that you might want to keep at the back of your mind. There's also definitely a bunch of other items that you could take a look at. Clothes, shoes, uh, Lego, that's a great one. Just make sure you know what you're looking for. Just make sure that you are doing your research before buying any sort of product because ultimately, if you're just randomly buying stuff, which is, you know, it, it's okay if you're trying to test it once or twice, but if you're regularly just buying random items because you think it's worth a lot of money, and you're not taking a look at those sell through rates, you might find that you're having a little bit of a more difficult time selling stuff, which is why, like I always say, 
doing your research is literally the most important thing you can do when reselling. And that's gonna be it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to go ahead, hit the like button, subscribe, comment any sort of other items that you guys think I might have missed in today's video or some other items that are selling really good for you guys. Let me know down in the comments below. Otherwise, that's gonna be it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.